On today's video, we're going to check out a classic Marty Friedman solo from the Megadeth days. It's actually not too hard to play. Let's check it out. Well, hey there, kids. It's your good buddy, Uncle Ben. Yeah, anybody that's watched my channel for a while knows that I fashion myself to be somewhat of a Marty Fried maniac. And it's of my opinion that a lot of his greatest solos come from this kind of middle era, the post-thrash era of Megadeth on records like Euthanasia and Countdown to Extinction. The solo we're going to be checking out today comes from Architecture of Aggression, and it's mainly based around the good old F-sharp minor blues scale, although it features some really cool exotic alterations typical of Marty's playing. It's also not too terribly hard to play, so if you've ever wanted to learn some of his stuff but been intimidated by songs like Tornado of Souls and stuff like that. This is a good way to get your toe in Marty's waters. That's grosser sounding than I wanted it to be. But anyway, you can learn a lot of his licks and habits and stuff just by learning this solo. The other day on my channel, I uploaded a video of me playing through this classic Friedman solo and I got a lot of requests for a lesson on it, so here we are. I have not included the playthrough portion in this video, so that way I can, you know, yeah. Anyway, I had a backing track made by my good buddy, Jeff Rupert, who you guys should hit up on Instagram, at J.A. Rupert, for all your audio needs. And be sure to check out that last video if you want to hear a full-speed playthrough of this solo. But before we start breaking it down, let's hear those tasty licks again at Stepdad Speed. As always, downloadable tabs, backing tracks, bonus lessons, and so much more are available to everybody who supports my channel, even at just the $1 a month level, over on my Patreon page, patreon.com slash benellerguitars. There's a ton of bonus information available over there, as well as access to a network of awesome people, just like yourself, so be sure to click the link in the video description and sign up to my Patreon page today. Thanks. Gear-wise for today's video, I've got my numero uno, my Sir Modern Satin right here running into the Fractal Audio Axe FX3. Okay, kicking off with some bluesy licks here. Let's start off here in that 14th position, F sharp blues scale. And begin with these 17th fret bends on our B string. You're gonna do a whole step bend with some vicious vibrats. You really gotta dig in and play hard when you play Marty's stuff. It's architecture of aggression, right? Not architecture of moistness. Really dig in there and goose this thing. You're gonna play this descending lick. Do the same thing again. Then you're gonna bend the 17th on the high E instead, like this. You'll notice that you hit the note, then bend it, unlike the immediate bends you did on the B string. Okay, you'll notice that after that delayed bend, I played the same descending lick. And then you gotta play that 17th fret B string with another whole step bend and some big ol' vibrato. I love this next lick. So this is a little string skipping thing between the G and high E strings. Start off with a little hammer on here from 16 to 17 on the G. We're gonna skip a string, grab the 14 on the high E. Then you're gonna walk down the G. Notice that was pick stroke, pick stroke, pull off. Marty's not really much of a pick every note kind of guy. Play the same lick, only substitute the 17th high E for the 14, like this. Notice you kind of got to roll that ring finger down. I tried working this out to where I could do like the little finger under there instead, but I don't know, maybe my fingers are just too thick to fit up there in the high frets like that. You might have more luck than me. So I just roll that ring finger down. 
same little descent after that. Now right here, I'm pretty sure that's what he's doing, just like a quick whole step bend on the 16th G, then the 14 on the G. I see some people that play it with a slide. That sounds fine too, but Marty loves those bends and stuff, so I suspect he's doing a bend there. There's also like no live footage of him playing this, so it's kind of hard to say for sure. After that, follow this up with just kind of a classic roll up that blue scale that leads us into this really weird lick that's so cool. Again, string skipping between the high E and G string. Okay, what I'm kind of visualizing here is the same shape on both strings. 14, 16, 17, 14, 16, 17. And what it kind of feels like is the high E string is kind of being chased by the G, which is always a note behind it in the scale. Behind, behind, behind. See what I mean? It's kind of like the G is always one note behind the E in terms of the positions. Play that again a little slower here. And then when you reach this part, you're gonna play that 14th G sliding down to 11. Okay, so after that slide out, you're gonna play the octave of that note, the 14 here on the high E. After that high octave, you're gonna play this note a few times, slide it down, play that a few times, then go down a half step and do a quick half step bend. Okay? And then on the D right here, you're gonna play the 11, 10, and 11. Now we're gonna get to the first fast run, which again features a lot of legato. It's not a heavy picking thing. Okay, what you're gonna do first is start off here on the D string fret number 11, and we're gonna play up with some hammer-ons. Play the same shape on the next string, only you're gonna pick the first two notes, and then just do hammer-ons and pull-offs the rest of the way up and down. That's essentially the pattern he's gonna do for the next section of the licks here too. Hammer up, pick, pick, then legato up and down. Restart the idea from right there. And this time when we reach the B, we're gonna play just some chromatic nonsense right here on 12, 13, and 14. So again, it's hammers up, pick, pick. Play the same idea from right here. We're gonna play hammer on, and then the same chromatic shape on high E. Okay? And then you're going to just pick your way up to the root note F sharp. Licks like this that have a mixture of legato and picking, you've got to be really sure to keep your rhythm straight. Because a lot of us have a tendency to rush whenever we do legato, those hammer-ons and stuff. A lot of us just, you know, really rush them like that if we're not putting the pick in charge of the rhythm. So you might even want to practice that one with a metronome or something to make sure you keep your timing straight between your hammer-ons and your picking. Keep the groove really tight. And then we have probably the hardest lick in the solo. You can hear the groove kind of accelerates there towards the end, almost as if he's realizing like, oh crap, I gotta be right here to end the lick. And he just kind of burns through the rest of it. There's a picking trick here that helps though. I'll show you that when we get to it. Okay, so essentially this is just walking down the minor pentatonic scale, only instead of starting from the A note, that we all know from that position. He actually jumps up here into the next position and starts off on the B note. So we got a big old stretch right here from 19 to 14, okay? From here, just walk down the scale. Okay? It's at this point on the A string, you're gonna play three notes, and this is where the rhythm kind of accelerates. Hear that groove? Okay, so after that last thing you did on the A string, you're gonna be ending on a downstroke, right? Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. This is where it's really critical to follow this downstroke with another downstroke on the next string. This is Marty's style. Use any available down to down transitions whenever you can. You gotta think, because of the way that Marty plays with that like flipper hand, consecutive downstrokes is really easy for him to do because the paintbrush is already angled that way, so it likes to go down the wall like that, you know what I'm saying? So anytime you can do consecutive downstrokes with Marty solos, do them, and this is one of those cases. I remember back in the day, like, 
seven years ago whenever I uploaded my cover of this. I didn't really know that about Marty's playing, and I was trying to play this all straight up alternate picked, and it's a nightmare. It's really hard for me to do it that way. But then whenever I was transcribing it for this video, I figured out that if you just do it Marty's way and go down, up, down, down, up, it makes it a lot easier. And then end with the uh, G string right there. It's just a pull off and then some heavy vibrato. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down. Okay? I'll be sure to notate that on the tab. I love this last lick because it's like halfway in the blues world and halfway in the gypsy jazz world, which a lot of Marty's licks are. This really reminds me a lot of like a Jimmy Rosenberg arpeggio thing that I see him do that also Sinister Gates from uh, Avenged Sevenfold does all the time too. Essentially, it's a repeating lick with the descending note walking down chromatically. Check it out. So that was three of the same lick, and all you're changing is the top note. So first we're gonna start off here on the B on fret number 19, pulling off to 14. Walk down the blue scale. Again, pick, pick, pull, right there. It's not all picked. Play the same lick, but sub out that uh, 19 for the 18. Same lick, but sub out the 17. Okay, so now you have this. And then what I like to do right here is cheat up with my first finger and grab that B string on 16, hammering to 17. And then grab the 19 with a one and a half step bend and some vicious vibrons. Okay, so, you know, you could play that lick a lot of different ways. You know, coming from this, you might feel like you could do this better than you could cheating up with the first finger like I did, but to me that makes it harder to get to the bend in time and put some good vibrato on it because you might end up having to do that with your fourth finger, which doesn't lead to a lot of power and accuracy, but whatever floats your boat. And that's the last lick that we play after that big old bend. You can see I'm starting off in the same position here, starting off on that 19th B, walking down chromatically. Same idea, but on the G string, a fret down. Okay, so start off on the G on 18. Notice I'll walk down and then back up. Pick that note again and give it a one and a half, really quickly. And then play this. So I'm just walking down the scale, whole steps. He's got a little kind of quarter step bend on that 14th G, the A note right there, before he ends on the root note. F sharp here on the D string for number 16. So tasty. Okay, so the solo starts off with blues power. Weird string skippy thing. Weird string skipping thing part two. Our fast legato lick. Wide range accelerating pentatonic stuff. And then the Django part two. And that right there is all she wrote. Like I said, those middle era Megadeth albums, they might not have all the super high tempo, technical, thrashy stuff that you heard on records like Rust in Peace, but I really do think Marty was in his element and wrote some amazing solos on those records. So let me know in the comment section below what your favorite Marty solo from this era of his Megadeth work is, and maybe we'll cover that on a future installment of Weekend Quank Shop. My personal favorite has got to be Killing Road. I think that's his masterpiece, maybe his best solo he's ever done, honestly. And I did a lesson on that one. I can't remember which number it is. I'll put that down there at the bottom of the screen if you want to check that episode out. But yeah, so much awesome stuff. Love me some Marty Friedman. 
Thank you guys so much for watching this video, liking it, and subscribing to the channel. Be sure to ring the bell for notifications. Huge thank you to my Patreon community for being the coolest people in all the Shire. And a huge thanks goes out to my buddy Jeff Rupert, at J.A. Rupert on Instagram, for making the awesome backing track that I used in the intro of this video. Well guys, it's been fun as always, but it's time to get away from the computer and go play some guitar. Less clicking, more picking. <laughs>